Hey everyone, how are we doing today? I would like to bring you an update on Brittany Drexel's case and show you that they had a uh, 2020, I believe ABC uh, 2020 show Friday. So this past Friday, they had a show come out that was showing Brittany's case. So um, this video that I have pulled up right now um, talks about that and a little bit of what it shows in it, but it's ultimately about the search for Brittany is what it's about. But this is just a little bit of it. Tonight, new developments in the case of the man accused in Brittany Drexel's murder as her family reveals the painful moment of visiting the site where her remains were found. I think I went numb again and I was just so angry. The case of Brittany Drexel will be featured on 2020 tonight as the man accused of her murder returns to court next week. Good evening, I'm Matt Malloy in for Dom this evening. Brittany Drexel was 17 when she disappeared in April of 2009 while visiting Myrtle Beach. This past May, Raymond Moody, a longtime person of interest, was arrested and charged with murder, rape and kidnapping in connection with her death. Her remains were found and later identified in a wooded area near where Moody had been living. Brittany's mother, Dawn, and her family were taken to that site where Brittany's remains were found. I think I went numb again, and I was just so angry. My son Camden lost it when we were there. Just standing over where she was buried, it was very hard for me. Just feeling where she was, it just felt like I was with her. Raymond Moody is expected to appear in court in South Carolina next week. A police lieutenant involved in the case confirming that Moody was seen with scratches on his face by police and his former partner shortly after Drexel disappeared. You can watch that full two-hour 2020 special tonight at 9 o'clock right here on 13 Wham ABC. Years this. Okay, and then um, I'm going to show you another video, but this one isn't about the 2020. It's about um, today, actually. It's about what happened today and what's going on um, with the sentencing. The man accused of kidnapping and killing 17-year-old Brittany Drexel in 2009 pleaded guilty to several charges this morning in Georgetown County. 62-year-old Raymond Moody appeared in court. Before his plea, he addressed the court and referred to himself as a, quote, monster and said he was very sorry. Drexel, who was from Rochester, New York, was in Myrtle Beach on spring break. Her remains were not found until May of this year in Georgetown County. Members of her family spoke at today's hearing, talking through tears about how they were affected by her death. I'll never be able to walk Brittany down the aisle, neither will her blood father or Don. Be, will never, she, he'll never, she'll never be able to see my granddaughter, her niece, whose ear is amazing. No, all that's snatched away from us. Raymond Moody was given a life sentence on the murder charge and 30 years each on the kidnapping and first degree criminal sexual assault charges. Okay, and then I have one more to show you that's also about today. Um, here we go. Years this case has made headlines across the country, but this was the place Brittany called home and her disappearance had a lasting impact on the community. Brittany's sister still lives in the area and spoke with our own Cheyenne Walker tonight. Cheyenne. Yes, Dan, an emotional day all around. Brittany's younger sister, Marissa, tells me that this is the end and this is the justice that Brittany should have. And Brittany's former soccer coach tells me he never lost hope in the case and he's happy for closure. One thing that you always had was hope, hope that they would find her. For 13 years, family and friends of Brittany Drexel waited for this very day, a day when justice would be served and the healing could begin. Initially, when you, you hear when you heard that they found somebody, um, we've heard that before. So now to actually have somebody come out, admit it, tell them some details, uh, 
prove that he actually was the individual. Um, it's closure for the family. This is the end. This is the justice that Brittany should have. And um, it hurts. It hurts a lot. I keep thinking of childhood memories of my sister all day I have. Um, it just hurts. I'm very hurt. Memories, pictures, and a piece of a young woman with promise is all the family has left. But Marissa is sure her big sister never left her side. It tells me, and this is all I've been thinking about today, that I don't have her physically here. I have now tamed to the realization my sister really isn't here. She has not been here for 13 years. I have felt this numbness for 13 years. Brittany was always there in spirit for the past 13 years that she's been gone. She's shown me signs. She's shown me, shown herself in my dreams. In court today, Brittany's grandmother read a victim impact statement on behalf of Marissa, who says she was not strong enough to attend. Today I'm hurt. Seeing Moody's face in that courtroom sit in me. Seeing him sit there and cry after my family and I read these statements sit in me. How do you sit there and commit a crime, then years later even admit you're a sick monster and cry about it? You're a narcissist. You had no heart, then you have no heart. You had no heart then, so you have no heart now. Slattery says throughout the 13 years, one, he never lost hope. One thing that you always had was hope, hope that they would find her. It, it was just so... Uh, fulfilling to know that they didn't leave any stone unturned and uh, that this uh, individual, um, he got caught. And uh, just a message out there to others that, you know, you think you're going to get away with it, but, you know, someday somebody's going to be knocking on your door. So. And Brittany Drexel is forever remembered by the community she called home. In 2017, a cherry tree was planted in her memory at Davis Park in Chi Lai, where there's also a memorial located not far from where she played soccer growing up. Dan? All right, Cheyenne, thank you. Yeah, new at 6 tonight, the New York... So that's the updates that we have for her. Like, that's great news. He's sentenced to, to an entire life, plus 30 on top of it. Um, and now the family can heal. Um, it's been a long time coming for this family. So I'm so thankful. I'm so, so thankful for, for this finally. But um, if anything else comes out about the case at all, I will update you guys and let you know. But I just want to put out a little update about her because a lot of people aren't talking about her case. And I know some have really followed her from the beginning. So, but I hope that you all have an awesome night and I will talk to you all very, very soon.